Hey everybody and welcome to Whiteboard Medicine. We appreciate you checking out the video. Here at Whiteboard Medicine, our goal is to create medical education content for all types of interested learners. That includes videos, practice questions, study resources, and much more. We would love for you to join our community by subscribing, hit that bell button. We're also working to build a high yield Patreon page. It's going to be full of practice questions, video outlines, notes, commercial free content, and much more. None of these videos are intended to be acted upon as medical advice. Please pause the video here and read this disclaimer its entirety before moving All on. All right, welcome to the world of fresh frozen plasma. Uh, today we'll be talking about FFP or fresh frozen plasma, the basics of that. We'll be talking about a brief introduction to FFP. That we'll talk about what is FFP indications for FFP transfusion, dosing, administration, risk, complications, special considerations, and a lot more. For those of you watching this as a YouTube video, we do have a podcast linked in the video description. For those of you listening to this as a podcast, just know the YouTube video is linked in the description as well if you prefer to watch it. We also will upload the study guide of this video to our Patreon page with practice questions, and we do have a free weekly newsletter on public health and medical education over the last week. All that linked in the description. Check all that out if you have an interest. We'd love to have you. No further ado, FFP Basics. So introduction, fresh frozen plasma. Well, as the name implies, fresh frozen plasma is the plasma portion of whole blood, separated and frozen within eight hours of donation. Because of this, it makes sense that it actually contains all clotting factors and can be used to treat bleeding disorders due to factor deficiency. So let's break this down a little bit more. FFP or fresh frozen plasma, and that's a B, not a P. FFP or fresh frozen plasma. This is the plasma portion of blood. And as such, it has all clotting factors, right? It can have antibodies as well, which will be relevant later. Uh, it does not, though, have red blood cells, white blood cells, platelets, right? Any of these non-plasma related cells. That gets into what FFP is. It is plasma rich in clotting factors. It needs to be frozen at negative 18 degrees Celsius or colder. And it can be used to treat coagulopathies. If we think about key features of this, one unit of FFP, that's the measurement, one unit, when you order one unit of FFP, it contains about 200 to 250 milliliters of volume per unit, right? If you watched our PRBC, our packed red blood cell episode, that's about 300 cc's per uh, unit. So FFP has a little less volume than packed red blood cells do, FFP being about 200, 250 cc's per unit. It contains all coagulation factors. This includes fibrinogen, factors 2, 5, 7, 9, 10, 11, 13, and von Willebrand factor. Right, So this has all the coagulation factors, which makes sense because this is literally plasma and in your blood plasma contains all coagulation factors. As we mentioned, it does not have any platelets. It does not have red blood cells. It does not have white blood cells, right? Because this is just the plasma component of blood. It does not have these cells. It does though require ABO compatibility. Okay, does anyone know why? A hint here is that it does not require RH compatibility. So we have red blood cells, right? And red blood cells, it can be A, it can be B, it can be, it can be A, B, you could be O. And this refers to antigens on the surface of the red blood cell. And let's say you have A antigens on the surface of your red blood cells, but you don't have B antigens. Your body will develop antibodies to B, right? Because you don't have it. So your body develops antibodies against it. And then if you get transfused with blood that has B antigens, all your B antibodies will attack it. Whereas if you have both A and B antigens on your red blood cells, you won't produce any A or B antibodies. So you won't have any antibodies to attack red blood cells. O, you don't have any antigens on your red blood cells, which means you develop both A and B antibodies. This is a little outside of this video, but if that's uh, confusing or of interest, we'll, we'll put another video out on that topic in particular. But the summary here, what we were trying to get into before we got carried away talking about uh, A, B, O compatibility is that your body develops antibodies against certain red blood cell antigens being either A or B. And when you get fresh frozen plasma, when you harvest it, you're harvesting a person's plasma and that includes those antibodies. And that's why you need to have ABO compatibility 
because you don't want to get someone's plasma that has antibodies to the A antigen if you are blood type A, because then those antibodies will attack your own red blood cells and cause a whole bunch of issues. So you need ABO compatibility. You don't need RH compatibility though, okay? Because you um, are not getting any blood cells, right? This is all plasma. Plasma stored up to one year frozen. It needs to be thawed and then used within 24 hours. Okay, so you need to thaw it and then use it within a day. Indications for FFP transfusion. The primary indications are active bleeding with kind of coagulopathy. All right, elevated PT, PTT, INR. This can even be better done with something like a Rotem or a tag, this is a thromboelastogram, which can help you understand the clotting cascade a little bit better. Uh, liver disease associated coagulopathy is something people talk about. There's a big caveat here though. Um, many people with liver disease, cirrhosis will have a high INR, but this does not mean they're coagulopathic, okay? Because people with liver disease don't produce protein C, protein S, as well as coag factors, and many times this balances out. But the INR is only testing for coagulation factors. So the INR will be high, but it didn't take into account the fact that many of these patients lose protein C and protein S as well. This gets into thromboelastogram, another test that can help you understand. In those with cirrhosis, is the INR just high uh, because they are coagulopathic and need FFP, or is it high because the test is only looking at coagulation factors, but really their coagulation cascade is pretty balanced. All right, disseminated intravascular coagula coagulopathy uh, can be an indication. People talk about warfarin reversal. So warfarin is a vitamin K antagonist. It inhibits vitamin K. Vitamin K helps you produce factors Two, hopefully we remember, seven, nine, and 10. So warfarin inhibits vitamin K, which means vitamin K can't produce these factors, which means your body doesn't have these factors. FFP being plasma certainly would have factors two, seven, nine, and 10, but PCC, something called PCC, which is prothrombin complex concentrate, is actually a more concentrated version of literally factors two, seven, and nine and 10. So PCC is a better immediate reversal to warfarin, although you could use FFP. And the massive transfusion protocol, MTP, uh, this is for patients who are actively exsanguinating and dying and it's balanced transfusion. So it has things like PRBCs or packed red blood cells. It has platelets. It also has FFP because you don't want to give a bunch of PRBCs and then dilute out your coagulation factors, which is why you want to kind of give this one to one to one or balanced transfusion, okay? So all these are indications. The most common one here is probably active bleeding with coagulopathy. Dosing and administration. This is important. This is something we're not great at thinking about in the clinical arena. You want to give about 10 to 15 milliliters per kilogram of FFP, right? We said one unit is about 250 milliliters. So if someone is 100 kilograms and we have to give them, we'll just use 10 for the sake of easy math, 10 milliliters per kilogram of FFP, that's 1,000 milliliters of FFP, which is gonna equal about four units of FFP, since each one unit has about 250 cc's, okay? So it's important to do this math when we're trying to give patients FFP. You should give them 10 to 50 milliliters per kilogram for um, uh, of FFP, and this is about three to four units for the average size adults. The goal is to raise their factor levels by about 30%. That'll help them achieve hemostasis. Thawing, if it is frozen, could take 20 to 30 minutes. Remember, it can be thawed for about 24 hours. Infused through standard blood tubing, and most people say, let's try to transfuse you within four hours of issuing. Risks and complications. So you can still get transfusion-related acute lung injury after FFP. It's not common, but it can happen. You certainly can have allergic reactions. You can get volume overload too, right? Heart failure patients, end-stage renal disease patients, if they get a bunch of FFP, this is volume just like anything else, and it can cause volume overload. And then this is very low, but there is an infectious risk. All the blood is screened, extremely low risk, but it is possible to get something like hepatitis or HIV. All right, special considerations. As we mentioned, you do have to do ABO compatibility, okay? 
FFP does not have platelets. It has nothing to do with thrombocytopenia. It has nothing to do with anemia. Okay. It uh, has plasma. It has coag factors and it has fibrinogen. Okay. Avoid routine use in non-bleeding patients. Even with elevated INR, you should not just be reflexively giving FFP for a high INR. All right. They need to be bleeding. You need to have a reason to give it to them because there are risks. And then it can be used in plasma exchange. Um, Plex, these are uh, modalities of, of treatment for different severe conditions such as TTP or um, uh, thrombotic thread of thrombocytopenic purpura. Um, so, you know, this is probably outside this video, uh, realistically in retrospect, not sure why we have included this, but yes, you can use it as a fluid and plasma exchange. Well, we can put out another video on that. As a summary to what we learned, FFP volume per unit, about 200 to 250 milliliters per unit. It contains all coagulation factors as well as fibrinogen. Um, it actually has more fibrinogen than cryoprecipitate, which is concentrated fibrinogen, but cryoprecipitate has much more fibrinogen per volume. Um, so uh, FFP is a less efficient way to give fibrinogen. You need to store it frozen. It can be thawed. Um, and stay thawed for 24 hours, uh, but you do need to start frozen, uh, and sometimes you need thawing time. You do need to make sure it's ABO compatible, given that you are getting antibodies in the plasma that could destroy the person's red blood cells if it's not ABO compatible. And that's used primarily for bleeding with coagulopathy, DIC, liver disease, warfarin reversal in places that don't have PCC. Hopefully that was interesting. Again, this is just kind of a basics to FFP. We'll be doing more advanced discussions on transfusion medicine and things like that in the future. Let us know what thoughts, comments, questions you have. If you're listening to the podcast version, we'd love for you to subscribe. Give us five stars if it's the YouTube video. Uh, we'd love you, for you to subscribe, hit the bell button. Um, also, check out our Patreon page. Again, our study guide for this video and practice questions will be uploaded there uh, with an open discussion. And then again, we have that uh, free weekly newsletter, uh, all that linked in the episode description. We appreciate you all. Stay well. Keep learning. We'll see See you next time.